How much should an implanted pacemaker or defibrillator move once it's implanted in your body? Good question. The answer is not much, a little bit, but not much. And it shouldn't move for some very good reasons. So the first thing they're gonna do during your procedure is they're gonna uh, implant the lead. And this is a lead wire. You can see it's very flexible, it's very strong. Uh, and there's a blood vessel that runs underneath your collarbone and it goes right into your heart, right where they need it to go. And so they're gonna use that blood vessel, they're gonna feed this lead in through the blood vessel into your heart and they're gonna attach it to the heart wall. This lead, if you can see that right up here, this has a little corkscrew up there and that's what gets screwed into your heart. Other leads have little paddles that, that attach to the fibrous tissue of the heart. They're gonna feed this into your heart and they're gonna attach it to the heart wall. Now that's secure enough to hold it into a beating heart. Next, what they're gonna do is they're gonna take this little thing right here. This is called a suturing sleeve. And they're gonna put it right in that little vein that they're using to put the lead down into your heart. And they're gonna suture this against your muscle in your heart. So now you've got this attached to your heart and you've got this attached to your chest. And there is plenty of slack in between the two. There is no contortion that a human can do bending whatever way they want that will make this go taut. So the chances of you pulling out a lead are really, really, really slim. Once they have this attached to your chest, now you've got all this extra lead wire. What do they do with this? Pretty simple, what they do is they coil it behind the device, then they create a pocket, they make an incision in your, your skin, and then quite literally, kind of gross, they take their finger and they just make a pocket under there, and then they put your device with the leads behind it, coiled behind it, in that pocket. Then, what most physicians will do is on the top of this header block are two little holes right through the header block. Those are suturing holes. And what they will do then is they will suture this device down to the muscle in your heart, or in your chest, before they close up that incision. So now you have a device attached to your chest, you have the lead attached to the vein and the muscle, and plenty of slack between the two. And then you have the lead wire attached to the heart, again, with plenty of slack in between. So there's no tension, there's no tightness uh, in these leads. Uh, once that implant is done, the chances of you pulling a lead out are really, really small. So how much should the device move? Not much, I mean, you know, a little bit. Mine's over here, mine's on my, my right side, this is the left side. Mine's on my right side, and I can move it around, and that, that doesn't hurt. It's attached to the muscle, it's under the skin, and also the pocket they form is usually not much bigger than the device itself. So it shouldn't move very much. But if you can slide your device up to your collarbone, or if you can slide it on over into your armpit, that's a problem, and that's something you should talk to your doctor about. Here's another thing that can happen. If the device is not tacked down properly and if the pocket is too big, you might roll over in bed sometime and look down and see that your device is standing on end. And that's not very good. It shouldn't do that. Try not to do that on purpose. What some people will do is they find out that their device can flip over in their pocket. They can flip it over and they think that's kind of cool. So people will start to play with it and they'll start to flip their device mindlessly usually. But what happens is you are twisting this lead wire right here. Because remember, it's attached to the body here, it's attached to the device, and you're causing a kink in this system here. This is not good. You don't want this to happen because now you're creating tension. And eventually you're gonna pull this out of the vein, and then eventually you're gonna pull this out of the heart. This is called twiddler's syndrome. Don't be a twiddler. Don't play with your device. Unfortunately, the only way to fix this problem of a device moving around in the pocket with the pocket being too big, the only way to fix that problem is with another surgery. So if you're able to keep your hands off your device, not playing with it, and the doctor is comfortable enough with it sitting as it is, they might wait until your battery needs to be replaced. And then they'll, they'll fix that problem by tacking down the next device, making the pocket smaller. They can sew it shut a little bit. Um, but if they can't wait that long, if they don't think they can wait until the battery replacement, unfortunately, the only, um, the only way to fix that is a new surgery. So the key message, don't play with your device. Leave it alone, just let it sit there. Don't flip it, do anything like that. If it's moving a lot, talk to your doctor. That may be something you wanna deal with.